one is called the Sarah Jade split. There might be another name for it. If there is, let me know. I'm guessing this was a move that was created by Sarah Jade since it's named after. Um, so this one is going to be a vertical split on the pole and it's gonna come from a cupid. Just a reminder, if your split is a struggle on the ground, it is going to be just as much, if not more of a struggle up on the pole, okay? Because I have found that has been a question I've gotten from students on this one. It's like, why can't I get that back leg straight? It's really hard, okay? So it's a huge uh, active flexibility movement on this. And remember, of course, you're still like supporting yourself by like a couple of pinkies on the pole while you're holding this and trying to make it look magical and not break a sweat. So if you're already struggling with a split on the ground, this one is going to be that much harder, okay? So we're gonna go into it from a cupid. Um, your bottom leg though, instead of it being on the arch of the foot, it's gonna be on the ankle, okay? So we're gonna go from a cupid in the positions on it, hand placement, muy importante. Um, if your hands are too far apart, it's gonna keep you from extending into your split. If they're too close together or the closer together they are, the more precarious it might feel, okay? So you're gonna try and find like a happy medium in the beginning. I find when I go into it, my cupid, as much as I could put my bottom hand up high close to my knee, I actually wanna have it close to my inner thigh because once I'm in the move, I'm then gonna try to turn my hips here to square. So if I had started with my hand here, it ends up blocking me versus if my hand starts closer down here on my thigh, I can rotate and get into my split a little bit deeper, okay? The top hand is gonna go somewhere right around knee level, okay? Once that's in place, that cupid leg is gonna thread up the pole as you saw, and as we're gonna do in a moment here, couple little tidbits on this. This is where it gets real. Um, threading that leg up the pole. It's determined quite a bit by the power of your booty. And it's not just how strong your booty is and like how much you can squat. It's how much your active flexibility engagement is to be able to open your hip flexor. Okay. Plus now you have the resistance of the pole in the way. So one way you can work this one, um, putting a sock on that top leg can help thread up the pole. But keep in mind that also takes away that contact point. You still have plenty of other contact points, but that is something if you're like, I'm trying to thread it up the pole and it's just like, oh, catching. Putting a sock on that foot, just, you know, even just not like a little baby sock can help kind of thread it up. So let's look at all those things together and then we'll add on to those. So getting into your cupid, you can drop down into it. You can uh, invert up into it, whatever entrance you prefer. And this move works on static or spin, just personal preference, whichever you prefer, okay? So cupid, get that bottom heel on. My bottom hand, I'm gonna drop down so it's close to the top of my thigh. My top hand, I'm gonna slide down. Then I'm going to internally rotate my top knee, rest my foot on the pole, then thread that leg up. And that goes into your Sarah Jade. Okay, so there's a lot of booty action going to try and keep that leg. Then rehook that knee back to your Cupid, exiting wherever you want. Okay, so one thing that I did find with this, I'm playing around with this one. Um, if I try to go from my Cupid to just flex my foot with my thigh still touching the pole, it makes that transition more of a struggle. I think because there's so much tension. I've found instead, and this also is just gonna depend on your comfort level with those other contact points. If instead I take this knee and I actually take it completely off the pole almost entirely, turn it down and then put my foot on and thread it up, I find it makes it easier to get in that transition because otherwise I have too many contact points when I try to go into it and you're just fighting the pole. Okay, that's something, like I said, that works for me. Um, but in doing that, it's gonna give you less security as far as contact points, but that means it's gonna give you more ability to be able to slide, okay? So it might not be something that you're comfortable doing in the beginning when you start this move. You might wanna feel like you're safe in it. Number one priority, don't die. Um, but if it's starting to feel comfortable, you might wanna try that internal rotation and then slide up on this. So you probably already saw this and we're probably already doing the math in your head, but something to think about when you're in your cupid whichever knee was hooked that's going to be the leg that's behind you okay so if you're doing the math and calculating which is your better split okay if your right leg forward is your better split you're going to want to hook your left knee in your cupid 
Okay. So if you have to kind of plan accordingly, as far as like, well, I got a pulled hamstring on this side, da, 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 whatever it is. Um, I find with this move, the hip flexor intensity is much more than the hamstring intensity, but that's also just for me personally, everyone's a little bit different. It's going to depend on where your tight areas are. Um, you can do this with both legs bent also. Okay. So if going into this and you're like, Oh, okay. Those flexing moves are so not happening for me. Um, you can bend both legs and that's okay too. Okay. So going into this, remember we're talking about the hand position, play around with this. If it feels comfortable having that top hand, like right at your knee, maybe the next time you slide it down a little bit. Okay. So to go into with a bent leg, we've got heel. Okay. Slide that leg down. I'm going to bend my bottom leg and my top leg. Okay. And it kind of makes a pretty shape, right? So it doesn't have to be a completely straight split to be a pretty shape. Okay. So Sarah Jade split, make sure you stretch your splits first. Okay. Muy importante on this one, because like I said, it definitely is a lot of um, glute engagement and hip flexor opener on this one. Um, and really focusing on trying to square your splits. I find with this one, a key component in getting it to look um, like I'm on the pole is really trying to square my hips. It doesn't mean they necessarily go all the way square because my hands are in the way, but um, making this move look cleaner, at least for me, and once again, this is personal preference and everyone has a little bit different eye for what look they want, but I'm really thinking of trying to square my splits. Okay, there are some moves that a faux split looks fantastic. I think it actually looks better. This is one that I find the more square I make it, that's what starts to make, I have to really focus on that glute engagement of that leg, okay? So spend some time stretching out your splits beforehand. Maybe put a sock on that top foot if you feel like you're getting a little bit too much friction. Um, play around with the distance of your hands, okay? But one key thing I did find is making sure that bottom hand is low enough that it doesn't get away in the way of my top hip. And then over time, if you want to, feeling comfortable moving the top hand down even lower as well. And that'll help you also get a little bit deeper into it. So Sarah Jade Split, show me your spreadies to the gods.